Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwenta G Show, where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today, we're going back into monsters because with the new edition of the fancy new deal cards, we're still kind of reviewing them, putting them into decks to see what works. And uh, today, we're gonna take a look at one of the new kind of meta decks it's still one of the meta decks so the first time we went with square tail traps the second video of the season was the crimes deck from uh, last week and today we're going to be looking at the bleeding edge deck and of course you heard it by the name already the bleeding edge deck is a pure blooded vampire deck with a lot of bleeding abilities and of course a lot of vampires as you can see in the first glance if you're looking at this uh, this card list here it's uh, filled to the brim with those fancy fancy vampires let's go through the cards one by one as we always do again if you know what these cards do don't bother with the deck overview we can head straight into the example match if you want to you can check that in the video down below and the timeline should be separated into each different part of the video but if you're not you want to see how each card works you want to see what the um, synergies are i'll go through them one by one should also say that decklist is available on the play Gwent website the link is in the description of this video so definitely check that out as well and you can check out our new meta snapshot in the link in the description the other link not the play Gwent link the team elder blood link as well because that will help out the team immensely but let's go through these cards the first vampires that we've added of course are four provision bronzes there's two bruxas in here both have thrive and on deploy they give a unit bleeding for two Two turns so drive meaning that as long as you play a, every time you play a unit that is higher in power than the bruxa the bruxa will boost herself by one so nice little engine capability aside from her default ability the next up is another engine the garkane is a vampire that boosts himself by the end of your turn by one if your opponent has a bleeding unit on their board which should be almost always the case unless you're facing something like traps that doesn't have any units on the board then we have a double plumert plumert uh, gives you four power and two bleeding and if you already have a bloom plumert on the board you trigger his bonded ability giving bleeding for four turns instead so a little bit of synergy in the bronzes, but of course these cards are not what you're here for. This is a devotion monster deck, so the NL Conqueror is also included. Just a very nice 7 points for 4 provisions. Then there's 2 organics in this deck. Uh, well, there's actually 3, but I'll check out the final one in a minute. There's 2 Feasts of Bloods in here giving you a purify ability damaging an enemy unit by three and if you control a vampire which will be most of the time you will also give that same target bleeding for three turns so at the end of your opponent's turn those units will lose another point and it's interesting because this also gives you a purify ability so you can take out defenders really easily with this organic card as well and it's in the bronze range so the flexibility is all there then we're going a little bit higher there's a few five provision uh, bronzes here as well the necronaut has an order ability allowing you to provide uh well not provide that sounds a bit too positive you inflict bleeding for two turns on an enemy unit of your choice has a cooldown of two so every two turns you can play this but whenever you play another vampire card you actually reduce this unit's cooldown by one allowing you to apply bleeding for two turns every single turn as long as you're playing vampires and of course our next one is also a vampire another bruxa if you can talk uh, call it that it's the alp also three power but on deploy you give an enemy unit three turn bleeding and if she manages to survive the next turn you will allow uh, it will allow you to have the order ability that gives another unit three bleeding so technically if you manage to do all of this and the bleeding actually takes down efficiently you actually get nine points for this five provision bronze which is actually pretty good especially in this deck um because the synergies are very much here you'll see that in a minute then we're starting to come into the middle range where our removal is so the first one is the api and phantom um has veil has zeal and the order ability with that zeal is if you're on the melee row you can damage a unit by three but if you not, don't use that ability at the end of your turn 
you actually boost that apiarian phantom by one every single time so this is a growing unit one of the patience engines uh and um yeah just a very good all-round card next up we're back into vampire territory gale four power and if you deploy him on the melee row you can damage an enemy unit by one which isn't much of course but if it's bleeding you deal three damage instead and on top of that if you manage to kill the unit that you're targeting with that one or three damage you boost yourself by the base power of that unit that can be very very powerful but more often than not it results in about an eight power gale and three damage which is always very very handy and handy indeed um, then of course we have Ada Striga as well another fancy little removal option giving you if you have the highest unit on the board which you should okay because you can start bleeding down your opponent rather literally um, gives you four damage on an enemy unit if you don't it's only two damage but you still have a five power unit as well so at least seven points but more often than not nine points instead then we have Whispers Tribute um, not a vampire, but uh, one of the three lovely ladies of Crookback Bog. And she, if you deploy her on the range row, she functions, functions as a tutor, allowing you to play an organic card from your deck. We only saw the Feast of Blood before, but there's another one coming, the big one that you already know from our uh, Arrakis Swarm deck from a few weeks back. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. So then we have the Proto Fleeter, also has changed a bit in the uh, patch 8.3. Because right now he starts at 4 power, you give an enemy unit bleeding for 3 turns and then you boost yourself by the amount of bleeding on that unit. So base, this gives you 10 points. Um, but if you already had bleeding on that unit, your proto fleeter will become even stronger. Especially, there's a lot of bleeding in this deck, so if you want to keep the proto fleeter as your finishing move then you can definitely do that. You target a unit that has an immense amount of bleeding just accumulated over time and then you add a little bit on top of that and your proto fleeter can go very very high indeed i've seen the proto fleeter go up to 15 points in this deck um and it can definitely go even higher then we're getting into the synergy cards uh, oriana is a classic card for the vampire bleeding arc archetype on the ploy you give an enemy unit bleeding with a duration equal to the number of allied vampires so if you have four other vampires on the board you give four bleeding and so on and so forth as long as she's on the range row, she also has a passive ability that allows you, well, doesn't really give you the option, she just does it. She boosts herself by the number of bleeding enemy units every single turn, which is, well, every single of your turns, of course. So a very, very powerful engine if she remains unanswered. Then because we're dealing with a lot of engines, I've also added the Cave Troll since he can definitely defend those engines uh, for a bit at least. Then Nagelfire is another interesting tutor giving you the option to look at two of your remaining gold cards in your deck. Play one of them and then put another one on top of your deck. Don't forget that second ability because I've seen a lot of people forget about that. Because um, you might play into Kantarella, which you definitely don't want. But on the other hand, if you play this on a pass round and you know that there's a crappy gold card still left in your deck. For example, it was tribute you can't really use anymore. You can pull that and put the other gold card on top of your deck allowing you to pull it automatically at the start of round three. So definitely a lot of options even for that uh, secondary ability there. Then we're in our very powerful vampire. So first off, Detlaf van der Editen. So he's the uh, one of the leader cards that have been reintroduced. Start at six power and on deploy you spawn the Blood Moon ability, well the Blood Moon row effect on an enemy row for one turn. The Blood Moon, if you don't remember it from the Arca Swarm, if you haven't seen that uh, video yet, Blood Moon... Um, Puts bleeding for two turns on a selected unit, unless if that unit is already bleeding, then it just damages that unit by two and doesn't touch the bleeding. So it is technically also two points every turn, but it's a bit more special because of the bleeding. Um, you can increase the duration of that base uh, Blood Moon by one for each adjacent vampire that is next to that love once you play him. So it can go up to three turns of Blood Moon, giving you technically already 12 points. But he also has an order ability, no zeal, so you need to wait until the next turn to use this ability, where you can damage an enemy unit with bleeding by one. So the unit needs to be bleeding, you only deal one damage, but if you manage to adhere to both of these criteria, you actually get another Ekimara on his side, uh, which is, if you don't remember, a three-point vampire. So 
could possibly be four points every turn if you manage to play things correctly. Then of course the Crimson Curse, which is that final organic card that I was talking about, spawns the same Blood Moon effect on an enemy row for five turns and gives you the extra bonus of spawning two Akimara, so again those three power vampires on the opposite row of where you put the Blood Moon. So a very powerful tempo card which sticks down for the next five turns on your opponent. So it can be rather overwhelming for your opponent and especially if they don't calculate that effect in really nicely, that can be to their detriment. And then the secondary, well not the secondary, the strongest monster card, monster leader card that has been introduced in patch 8.3 is the Unseen Elder. I kind of need to correct myself here because I made a mistake in the original leader review, uh, leader card review video that I made, but let's go through his ability. So 5 power, on deploy you give a unit 4 turns of bleeding, and at the end of your turn, every time, you give bleeding for 2 turns, to a random enemy unit that is not bleeding. If all your opponent's units are bleeding, this does not happen. A non-devotion, this is a devotion deck, this is the reason, you trigger all the bleeding on enemy units at the end of your turn as well. Meaning that first you provide bleeding on the unit for two turns, and then it ticks down the bleeding and of course deals one damage that way. Um, so in my original video I said that this didn't take down the bleeding, it actually does reduce the counter on the bleeding as well, but it of course deals the damage as well. So this is effectively allowing you to put one bleeding and one damage at least at the end of your turn, but it triggers every single bleeding. So if you have a full enemy board with all bleeding units, Unseen Elder triggers all of them by one every single turn which can be very, very powerful. The original version of this deck also had Karantir to make him double up, but it's less consistent. Karantir is easily brickable, and of course you get a one power copy of the card, so it's easily removable as well. It has some nice effects with double Unseen Elder, but felt like the deck wasn't strong enough if we just uh, added Karantir. There were better options for that nine provision slot. And then the final one, is the um, the evolution card of monsters, so Oberon, um, giving you, again, the benefit of devotion, giving you the final evolution of Oberon at the very end, so Oberon Conqueror, giving you a five power unit that on deploy creates and spawns a bronze and plays a bronze wild hunt unit that's random, but it's also boosted by one, and if you play the NL Conqueror after that, it's also boosted by one. So very powerful finishing card, just for the amount of points it generates it doesn't really fit the archetype of this deck i know but it's a very very good addition to this deck while spreading out your points and not going for a very high power unit in one go um, and then for our tactical well not our stratagem is tactical advantage giving you a five point boost and of course our leader ability we haven't talked about that yet is blood scent giving you three charges of three turns bleeding so you can apply bleeding for three turns three times over the course of the match. And once you've used that final charge, you also get another Akimara three power vampire on your side of the field. So technically giving you 12 points for the leader ability, which might be less, might be more, but it's good to keep those charges to combine that with something like Oriana or Unseen Elder, those stronger cards. That's enough about the deck. Let's head into an example match. And I think, yeah, Nilfgaard, so that... Could be good, could be bad as well. It's a simulator, apparently. And I've actually made this pretty uh, tense for myself because this is the match. If I win this, I go into pro rank right now because I've uh, recorded this rather quickly after the previous video. Mulligan advice. So Mulligan advice, it's pretty simple, actually. You need to just get rid of your low provision bonuses. Uh, other than that, there's only one tutor that can technically brick, which is the uh, Chrome. So you just need to be careful to not have too many organic cards in your hands. And then the plumes are actually not that... Yeah, it's not going to make too much of a difference. Because the other bronzes are actually more powerful than the plumes, so not that problematic. Usually I want to start with a um, Nekurat, because you have that order ability that you can keep using. I don't have one right now. So the only technically engine capable card, I should have kept a Garcane probably, um, just to have that engine there. I'll just use the Bruxa since she also has the Thrive ability. And it's better than nothing, I suppose. So we, use, we lose that two points of bleeding, um, but it's not that much of a problem right now. And we get the Nautica Sergeant first, which is a classic start for the Assembly decks these days. They don't 
often go for actual assimilate units anymore, which is weird because the Nausicaa Sergeant is technically better because it triggers on every deployability. Um, but that aside, that, that completely to the side of this, but uh, let's just start bleeding units because that's what we're here for. Just put three points of bleeding with our Alp on the Nausicaa Sergeant. And that's basically how these first few rounds go. You use your bronze cards to just stick down your opponent's card while they are not really noticing it all that much. Because bleeding is weird. It gives you points, but those are points that you don't immediately see. Because right now it looks like we're two points, only two points ahead. But technically those three points are going to go from our opponent. So technically it's already one six, even though it might not look like it. And then we get a Bruxa on our side, which just, yeah, gives some more bleeding. Um, I could damage that Bruxa, but it doesn't really, doesn't really matter, right? Let's put some bleeding, some extra bleeding on the Nautica Sergeant, and then use the second ability of the Alp to put another three points of bleeding over there. And then I think I'm just going to use... I don't have an engine card in hand, so might as well use this on the Alp. There we go. Otherwise, I would use that on the Nekorot, of course, because that's our uh, first engine that we would use, giving you an 8 power vampire that can provide bleeding. As, again, I said provide, inflict bleeding every single turn if you play it right. And then we get hunting packs, so they're getting the tinning out of their deck. Huh. Might actually be something else than just simple assimilate. But it doesn't look like it too much. Um, there's a few things we can do. I don't want to overspend too much right now. So right now it's equal, but of course I have more bleeding on the board. So let's just use Ada. That's nine points. We have a lot of gold cards in our hands right now. I could technically also use Gale. Uh, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Because Gale is actually a card that's a lot stronger than you might give him credit for. Because if you do it on a bleeding unit and you manage to kill it, you get those 7 points with just the power and the damage. But then you also get... Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, that was... Sorry for my swearing. But that was probably the one of the worst cards they could have got. <laughs> okay. Okay, that is annoying. Um... The Blood Moon is two turns, so we're gonna get another bit of bleeding. Might as well go on the Duchess Informant. Yeah, let's. I'm gonna use one of my charges. Do I use one of my charges? Yeah, I'm gonna use one of my Blood Sand charges on that love. And then use the Proto Fleeter to give me a 10 point Proto Fleeter on that loss. Already bleeding ability, also triggering the tribe on the Bruxa. So that is pretty okay. Doesn't give me a good target for uh, Gale just yet, but I'll get one in a minute. And then we get Coup de Grasse, which is going on... Yeah, just the Duchess Informant, I suppose, yeah. There we go. So that guarantees the two bleeding on the Alp this time, and they'll probably play the Alp again, because the Alp is the most... Oh no, Bruxa! That was interesting. So that's going to be two guaranteed damage on, yeah, over there on the Alp. Hmm. I don't have any benefit for that five point bleeding right now. I could get rid of the two Broxas or one of the two Broxas. There is actually more bleeding on our opponent's side. Let's see, I'm going to use Feast of Blood, which might seem weird because there's already bleeding on that love, but I'm going to use Gale afterwards if our opponent manages to survive all of this. So that's 3-2. There we go. So next turn, that love is going to be only one point anymore, and Gale is going to be able to kill it, giving us a six point boost, and we get poison on the Proto Fleet, probably. So that's poison on the Proto Fleet. So next time we're going to get another poison. I could save up Gale. Because right now we're at a deficit. We know that 10 point Proto Fleet is going to go. They still need to play another card to finish that up. And they won't have a target for Deadloff anymore. And he's going to die next turn. I could use Gale, but it's just a replacement at that point. Because it's going to go up to 10 as well. 
giving us one more. It's, it is really good though, so let's do that again. There we go. And we get another 10 point card, so that's going to basically replace the Proto Fleeter that we just lost. Or that we're going to lose if our opponent doesn't pass. There's a lot of cards on the top row now, kind of grow, grew that way. <laughs> so that is equal. They did it all with bronzes, which is the annoying one when you're playing monsters against something that has poison abilities. Because your units tend to go high, even though this deck usually doesn't go all that high. I think I might actually pass. It would be foolish to push now. And that's of course with Masquerade Ball, which is definitely going to happen. Okay, they don't go for just the easy win here. Well, they're going for the easy win, but not for... Uh... Okay. I think that's kind of overplaying it a little bit. So I think we kind of succeeded in our efforts here, because Bratons is a strong card that they don't have anymore now. The only annoying thing is that they have double cross so okay they could technically grab one of the stronger cards in my hand but if i can keep it to a few cards that benefit me but not our opponent that should be fine and we get a pretty good hand i'm gonna get rid of one of the Garkanes, and then yeah the feast of blood and we get the blood moon okay our opponent passes which means that we immediately use the Garkane. And that's our only bronze, so we just have an easy round two. Now the only annoying thing is that there's a lot of good cards in my hand. Which is annoying because we're facing double cross. Okay, so we get a few. Ooh, we get now we get the Nikurats. Okay. Let's get rid of one of them. And then yeah, let's get rid of. Okay. So we get. We get the defender, which means that we need to go all out as quickly as possible. So let's play the defender first. Uh, we have Oriana, so I should put him on the range row since that's the only really strong card that is range uh, row locked in general. So we're gonna play him over here. Might go down to uh, Vincent from Orleham, but then, yeah, at least I got it. So, okay, so we get a poison, which is fine. Um, it's high time that we start playing those uh, really... Oh, we got a Purify. That's even more interesting. Aha. Uh -huh. But still, with that double cross available, I don't want to have certain cards in my hand. So let's put... Oh, this is such a waste. Probably going to get... Um... I'll probably get, uh, get locked on the Unseen Elder. But it's better that than having it in our hand. And we get Yennefer's Invocation. Of course, because Nilfgaard sucks. Um, we still have one more turn for the Blood Moon. So I could have very well just use Nekorot now. Because he's basically the only real engine card that matters at the moment. And now we get Masquerade Ball, of course. So there we have the Thirsty Dame. I'm going to do something that might look a bit weird, but I'm going to put the Crimson Curse um, over here, because that's what we need to do. There's five cards left in our opponent's hand, so that's perfect for those five turns. But then we're going to start the Bleeding on the Thirsty Dame, because I want to take it out as much as possible, but we lost our control options early on. Sadly, the Blood Moon trick is on the wrong card there. Um, the Usurper has Veil, which is annoying. But they're actually not going for the bleeding there. Okay, so that is actually pretty okay. Um, Oriana's gonna be next, although... No, Double Cross is still coming. They will have the most points with Oberon. So I'm gonna play Oberon first. So now, next up is Oberon. Uh, we get the NL Conqueror, which is kind of lucky. And let's put that one over here. So those are two Veiled units. They can be poisoned. Uh, not right now, at least. And then we can put some more Bleeding over here. Doesn't really matter where. There we go. And we get two damage on the Thirsty Dame. Duchess Informants. Is that going to go onto Nekurat or onto the Anal Conqueror? Does he have 
Devotion? I has Devotion because, yeah, okay, he has Devotion. It's pretty nice. And get the Nagel Far, so they get the gold card. Which is, yeah, okay, that's fine. It's sad that the Unseen Elder is dead, because that would have been really nice. But at least we get a lot of cards that we can apply bleeding to. Uh, I'm actually wondering which gold card that I can still grab. We have a few options. We actually don't have a few options. We still have two cards and that's it. Um, but yeah, I need to play Oriana now. So Oriana is gonna be three bleeding, I think, if I calculated this correctly. So that's three bleeding. We get another two over here. And then another three isn't really gonna matter, I think. I'll put that back on the Thirsty Damekins. She can actually continue uh, getting some more bleeding on the board. But this doesn't seem like we're gonna win this. And we got Kuda Grass, which is gonna go on to Duchess Informant, I'm assuming. And now we get another NL Conqueror. Because that Veil is coming in really handy for them. So Duchess Informant triggering the Assimilate and the Thirsty Dame. And then NL Conqueror is gonna trigger the Assimilate again. We shall conquer this world. That was very loud, the bleeding, but still. It's not on the end of the world just yet. We still have the Alp, we still also have. Yeah, it is. Hmm. The Alp is double bleeding. Let's put some more bleeding on the board. We can still put bleeding on. Yeah, let's put bleeding on that one. And then bleeding on Artorius. Yeah, I don't think we'll win this, because I'm assuming we still have an option to kill Oriana. But if Oriana survives, this might still be good. And it doesn't look like they're getting... Ooh. That's actually really interesting. So they don't have a way of taking out Oriana. Um, then I think the best option. So I get 7 points from the API in Phantom, but right now I get an extra point... For bleeding I inflict, um, does that matter? I think the API in Phantom is probably better. Um, because I get two... And then four... No, you know what? I'm gonna actually play... Whispers Tribute. So I get two points from the card itself. Then we get Feast of Blood, which is a Purify. So that means that we can purify whatever the hell we want, add 3 damage and some more bleeding, and then 3 more bleeding on the one thing that wasn't bleeding yet, and that's that. That gives us 6 more points on Ariana, and remember, that's gonna be still 6 more points of bleeding at the end of our opponents. That actually won us the game. They didn't manage to kill Ariana, that was interesting. So there's going to be a Viper Witcher Mentor, but that's not going to be enough. The Crimson Cultist pop-up already spoiled it for us, but that was... Yep. We won against Masquerade Ball. That was actually really cool. Because they didn't have an answer for Oriana anymore. So that's a very powerful engine. Oriana was 19 points at the end there. So keep that in mind. Let's do another one. And I had pro rank with that. I kind of forgot about that. But yay. Joy. And then we're facing Syndicates. Okay, so we're playing against last week's He's deck. To fight with the wrong kind of so we kind of know what we're facing here. Because we've seen that last week. How that deck actually plays. So we're kind of want to anticipate that, uh, which means that the bleeding is going to come in handy if Azar Javed would be on the field. Other than that, there's not much we can do against certain cards, but again, there's not a lot of Veil in this deck, so compared to the previous matchup, this might actually just be a little bit better. Yes, we'll see. Uh, so that was actually pretty risky, because I have Whispers Tribute, so I have two of my organic cards in hand already. So it's not the best hand to start with, but we have a lot of bronzes that we can start tossing out. It doesn't really matter at this point, I think. We can start out slow. And of course we get the combo that we started out with last week as well, just to save crackers. And that most likely next up is going to be um, Nova Gradient Justice, but... Let's not worry too much about what our opponent can do. And let's just start adding some bleeding. Starting with the Bruxa, because the Bruxa has Thrive. Um, next up will be the Garkane, which will probably get destroyed. 
But aside from that, we can just use uh, the Alps after that. We don't need to go way too high here. Our opponent has a lot of crimes which can clear our board immediately if they want to. And they'll do just that, but then we just pass at the correct moment. So maybe if that is what is exactly going to happen, I'll see you guys in a second. Because this first round is going to be pretty boring, I think. And that was actually something that I anticipated here. So as I expect, expected, the first round was a bit boring. Um, but I stayed low on purpose. So we got a Garkane and an Alp destroyed. But we still have the upper hand here, I think. So our opponent passed at six cards. So we have two cards to actually make this up. Um, and now we can just apply that bleeding because that bleeding is real hidden value because it looked like we were very far behind but we're actually not that far behind because right now we only need we have two more bleeding on our opponent we have three damage on the api and phantom so that is already five points we only need to play six points i want to keep that removal um so I think Whispers is going to be enough, but I want to play the Nagelfire. Um, we get Gale, and Gale is actually perfect because Gale we can actually use on the Jin over there, and we don't even need to check out the API and Phantom anymore. So that was actually perfectly played, and we have a guaranteed Deadlove in our hands next up. So perfect. First round on our hands. So uh, that. We, we really benefited from playing low there because our opponent just went into passing way too quickly. They should have grabbed that first round. And we get that love and Oriana and Oberon. That was great. Uh, so since we also have Whispers here, I'm going to toss. Um, do I toss? I mean, I have Whispers in hand, so I might as well toss the... F Ooh, wow. Yeah, that's like some days you just get a hand where you say, okay, thank you. And just move on with your life. And of course we're going to pass in this round because we don't want to go up against Syndicate with uh, two cards. This advantage there. Now the only question I have is does our opponent have a Purify? If we get our Defender by the way because it doesn't look like we're getting the Defender. Um, I really would like that Defender though so let's get rid of the Plumert. And uh, we get a Broxa. It's not ideal but okay. And El Conqueror. Fine. I mean, we got all those other gold cards, so I don't, I don't really care at this point. What did we not get? Yeah, literally only the Defender. Okay, everything else is uh, shiny and golden in our hands, so... This is looking good, but of course gold cards are not everything. We still need to be in our A game, because this is still Syndicate Crimes, one of the best decks in the meta at the moment. And we get Shark immediately. Of course, it's not Final Evolution Shark, so he doesn't have Veil. So he can definitely be poisoned. A poisoned. Bled. I meant bled. Of course I meant bled. Um, let's get... It actually sounds like... You know what? Since that row is all good and nicely filled, let's just put the Blood Moon over there. Because that already gives us a little bit of extra bleeding. But I need to be under the assumption here that every single strong card that we'll play will be immediately taken out. Um, so I need to keep my control options close to the chest, which is why I didn't use uh, Ada in the first round, because we need to have that option. Um, so Jacques, we're going to get Cleaver, we're going to get Tunnel Drill most likely, unless they didn't get it. But Tunnel Drill is the biggest problem here, because we already got hit with a dip in the Pontar and we got hit with a Payday. So those two cards are gone, so it could be another one of both being 3 damage and 5 damage, and then we get the Tunnel Drill, which is the biggest damage dealer in the bunch. But I also want to play, don't want to play my strongest cards too soon, because Philippa might still be in, uh, in play here. But they start spending their coins on those, on Cleaver's ability. So still, let's use Nekorat. Let's start Bleeding Cleaver. We don't want to add more Bleeding to that Blood Moon uh, row, because of course that isn't going to help us much, because that extra damage on the armor would be uh, bad for us. So we just want to see that Bleeding tick up. So now we actually have, uh, we're going to have two units, because that one Flaming Rose Footman is going to lose its Bleeding. And now we got Tunnel Drill, okay. That's actually good. 
That's actually good. Because I am gonna... They're gonna lose dominance. Well, not lose. It's gonna be equal. But that means we have dominance. So we're gonna use other Strega on the tunnel drill. And then bleed it. There's not much else we can do. We don't have another control option, sadly. Um... I mean, there is one, and that's the one that we're going to use in a minute. As we still have Whisper's Tribute, which has a Feast of Blood. And we get Shakedown, which is what I was expecting. So that only boosts it up to four, which is going to be three in a minute. So we can kill it with Whisper's Tribute. And there's no boosting on the board, so they will lose the Tunnel Drill in the next turn. Okay, that's good. That was the card that I want to get rid of. But still, Philippi is still a problem as well. And we get hit with a double tunnel drill, most likely. Yeah, okay. That is fine. That is fine. That was to be expected at some point. Um, I'm gonna get rid of it. It seems like such a waste of points right now, but... Because it's only three points, but we need to get rid of that tunnel drill. It needs to go. There we go. We get some more bleeding with the blood moon. I think next up we're going to be playing... Do I play Unseen Elder already? Will depend on our opponent's coin, ca coin count. Because I might actually play Orianna first. Orianna first, then Detloff, and then Unseen Elder. It still gives us four turns with Unseen Elder. And we get... Yeah, we get Sigiraven. What do I do? I think I'm going to just put a huge amount of bleeding on Cleaver. Unless they spend the coins. Okay. So that's good. So now I'm still out of range of losing Oriana now. So I'm going to play Oriana. It's only going to be one turn of bleeding. Um, which is actually not that much of a problem. Um, let's put one turn of bleeding on Jacques. Because that actually might kill Jacques. Then we use our leader ability to start bleeding the, um, the two remaining ones. And that ends her turn. And we get an 8-point Oriana and Jacques dies. Okay. That was good. So next up again we have two vampires right next to one another. So that is going to give us the maximum amount of Blood Moon on the front row. Now I do realize that with all their coins spent they could use bloody good fun to kill Oriana. But then all their coins are gone. Which is fine by me. If they don't, then Oriana is going to go over again. Because that's still two bleeding units on the opposing side. And that love is going to make matters a lot worse in a minute. Okay, so we get Payday on Oriana, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So let's play that love in the middle here. And put that over here. It gives us bleeding. Now we get two damage. That's sad. So that means that Oriana is now at five power. And that laugh cannot be stolen here, which is also important. Because, as you can see, Siggy is at two power now. So next turn, if that laugh does not die, we can actually kill Siggy and get another vampire. Oh, I love Syndicate music. I love playing against Syndicate just because of the music. Because we're slowly gaining again. So that's the, the benefit of bleeding. It seems really slow. I think they're going to steal. Are they going to steal? Oh, no. What? So now we're out of... We can't get payday again. Bloody good fun is not going to be enough here. And we get... Oh, big pockets. And that, of course, puts Siggy up again. I keep forgetting about the fact that, of course, Siggy has Intimidate. I know if I play Unseen Elder now, it's going to get taken by Philippa. Do I use Protoflader now? No, I'm going to use, I'm going to use Unseen Elder. Um, so Unseen Elder on one of the dwarves. And then we're going to use that, that Love's ability to deal one damage. And now you can see the effect of uh, that Love ticking down. Uh, that Love, Unseen Elder. So now we're going to lose Unseen Elder. I'm guessing Philippa is still in their hands. So they either want to... They don't have a choice now, so they're going to go... Well, they have a choice. They have three cards that they can take, but... Are they going to go for Unseen Elder or Oriana? Unseen Elder, okay. That was to be expected. Um, but not much that I could have done against that. So now he's going to get the benefit of getting something to bleed every single time. 
And I'm basically out of bleeding. Now, um, do I still put bleeding on... Yeah, I'm gonna put bleeding on a new card because we're gonna get more benefit out of that. Let's put bleeding on the Unseen Elder. We're not gonna be able to kill it, I think. Um, I could do something like this every single turn, but... We're pretty far behind. And the Blood Moon just ended, but that means we still have... Ooh, a lot of points for Oriana. Because Oriana is still gonna go up, so Oriana is still six... Seven... No, six. Yeah, it's gonna be six. 21 points behind, but... Oberon? What is Oberon gonna give us? Oberon gives us... Yeah, the Anal Conqueror is just eight points. Yeah, that's really good, so let's put that over here. And then, of course, don't forget to actually put some damage on... Yeah, the, un the Unseen Elder needs to die. It doesn't really matter at this point, nothing else is bleeding. And I'm gonna get three more points from killing the Unseen Elder. We're gonna get eight points from the Anal Conqueror, and we get... Oh, the reset. Oh, that's boring. That is so boring. Okay. Is that going to be enough? I don't think it's going to be enough. So that's 8 points. And that is... But we have 1 point of bleeding! <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, alright. I mean, these videos tend to end with like a, a really close, close loss there, but that was really nice. That was... Applauding my opponent there. I'm gonna keep that in the video because that was a really good match. Um, it showcased the power of the deck even against an unfavorable matchup because definitely Light Pockets is not good to play against with uh, Bleeding. And we just barely lost, so that was, that was sad, but I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I don't actually mind including a match in these deck guides where I lose, especially if it's that close because it shows you what you can learn from that. It was very, very close, so it, it matters a lot where you put those small little uh, bleeding ticks. Because, yeah, it, it, it can come down to that single point, which it definitely did there. 49.50, that was painful. But again, this is the full deck. You, again, you can check the link in the play on the Play Grand Wipes website. The link is in the description down below. So check that out and uh, leave a like there if you like this deck. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this deck guide because we're at the end of the episode again. So I'd like to thank you all enormously for watching. If you have any opinions on this deck, let me know. If you didn't like this video especially, because I've seen a few dislikes on the previous video, but nobody said, told me what went wrong. So uh, if you dislike the video, let me know why, because I can improve on that afterwards. I really like that constructive feedback from you guys. If you have any comments on the deck specifically or things that can help us out, let us know as well because that can help us out immensely and I mean that's what we're here for after all. We're trying to help each other out and uh, giving us all the tips and tricks to try and best our opponents. Hope you guys enjoyed this deck guide on the Bleeding Edge deck. The vampires are back baby and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go play some more games with the vamp those vampires. Thank you guys enormously for watching and hope to see you in the next episode of Grand Edge. Goodbye and stay nutty.